TeachAnOldDogNewTricks.com. More than 40 hours of free computer training. Sit, stay, and learn. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Hollowitz, and I want to talk to you in this tutorial about QuickBooks about writing checks. Now, my experience has been there's a lot of kinds of companies out there. There are a lot of small businesses that use QuickBooks, and they might just be a, a small business or even an individual. And as an individual, you might have a checkbook that you carry around with you. And when you need to write a check, you simply write the check, record the number and the amount and who you paid, and then just carry that with you. Now, in this day and age, there are so many things done online where we pay with either a credit card or even a debit card. Debit cards typically come right out of your bank account. That my experience has been writing checks has become less popular over time just because we have a lot of different options. But on the theory that you carry that checkbook around with you, there is two ways really to write checks and I just want to talk to you about that. The first way is let's say you're a bigger company and you have pre-printed checks that you put in your printer. Well if you click on the write check icon right here you can go in and you can write a check and in a previous example we had written a check to Verizon so let's say we want to write a check to Verizon and do this this was our example before and I'm just going to ignore this for now by clicking on continue writing check let's say we want to write a check for four hundred dollars to Verizon I'm going to hit the tab key to move on and in a nutshell what we can do is we can print this later we can print it right now and if we have pre-printed forms we're all set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this because I really don't want to do this and I'm going to go back to the home page by clicking on home and I'm going to go back down to check register. Now we had previously created a checking account or a bank account so let's say that we're that type that we carry the checkbook with us and we write the checks and then maybe once a week or once a month when we reconcile our bank account we have to go in and deal with the register so I want to show you how to do the exact same thing but let's assume we've already written the check and we're just going back to record it so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on check register and it starts automatically with the date now to illustrate something if I want to put today's date in I can just hit the letter T for today and it will go right in and actually it has today's date I'm gonna hit the tab key and I'm gonna go over and let's assume for a moment that the check number I wrote was 1001 I'm gonna type that in let's say I wrote it to Comcast so I'm gonna type in Comcast now just so you know in advance this is not in our list of vendors at this point. So as I hit the tab key, again what you're going to see in QuickBooks as we go through this stuff everything is basically the same. If it's not in here it will prompt us to enter it. So when you're entering this stuff I always tell people just make sure you spell out the name of the company or the vendor the way you really want it to be. In other words if it was Comcast versus Comcast comma Inc period or Comcast Incorporated. Just get it right the first time. It just makes it easier. So pay a little bit of attention to this. And again, what I've said is QuickBooks is always the hardest and the more time consuming or most time consuming in that first month or so because you're getting everything set up. But a little bit of attention to detail at this point makes it easier in the long run. Now what I typically do is I'm going to just cl click on Quick Add. It's going to ask me is it a vendor? customer employee. I'm just going to use vendor and click OK. So now we're going to put in the amount. So I'm going to type in let's say $150. I'm going to hit the tab key. Now it's going to ask me to record this. What is this for? And if I click on the drop down, again, what is it for? Is it office supplies, payroll, internet, let's say utilities. And again, you'll notice utilities is there, but on the assumption that I knew that was there, what I could have done is just started typing it. U T and the minute I see it, just hit the tab key to move on. And if I want to put a memo in here, I can. But I don't really need to, so I'm going to come down to the bottom right and click on record. So this is another way that I can, in essence, write a check. And the next time I go to write a check, let's say it's right now, I have written a second check. Well, I've got the date, I'm going to hit the tab key to move on. And look what it does it automatically puts in the check number because it anticipates that the next check is going to be check number 1002. So when you're writing checks, again, 
you might write the checks keep track of it in your checkbook ledger and then later on come in to record this stuff or you might just write checks all at once print them out and mail them there's more than one way to do everything and that's why you've got to just adapt QuickBooks to the way you work and the way your company works and through a little bit of time and you know just patience you're gonna figure this stuff out no problem so if you have any questions on this again I'm always available you can reach out to me but again my name is Tony Hollowitz and I want to thank you for your time have a great day